We only know if your immune system has a problem if you come in and you're sick. But by the time you're sick, your options get much more limited. The challenge is how do you figure out someone is going to get sick and how can you prevent that? We're getting understanding of the, of the nuts and bolts. The how, how is a system constructed? How are the, what do the molecules look like? How do they work? On another level, we're working to develop metrics for immunological health. That is, you know, how can we tell whether one person's immune system is healthy and another person's immune system isn't healthy? You can get a cholesterol test and with some degree of certainty, they can predict whether you're going to have a problem or not. And you can do something about it. Uh, you can take drugs to lower your cholesterol, for example. We don't have anything like that in the immune system. We don't really understand how this whole system works as a system. We've studied parts of it, and a lot of people have studied a lot of parts of it, but nobody's really studied it as a whole and tried to put those parts together. And so I've been sort of attracted by the mystery, by the interesting biology, the unique biology. There's nothing else we know in biology is quite like the immune system. In the 80s, we managed to isolate genes that were important for T-cell recognition. That was a big, big problem in the field. The field was really hung up on that, and people were going crazy about it, and, um, and kind of pulled it off. I kind of isolate myself from what other people are doing, because I think if you are immersed with what everyone else is doing, you tend to do those things, or you tend to be trapped in those, that frame of reference. Um, and that almost guarantees that you won't do something that would be a, a quantum leap away from what the crowd is doing. Um, so I think it's important to think from sort of the beginning, to just tear everything down and try to build it up again and see if you can build it up in a different way. I think the most obvious personality characteristic of scientists is not intelligence, but it's stubbornness. It's the ability to kind of latch on to something like a pit bull, you know, just get your jaws around it and, and not let go. In the early part of my career, I was kind of freeform and undisciplined and not good at following directions. And that turns out to be a good, a good personality characteristic too. You know, got me going on different pathways and pursuing different things. And this is, I think, the analogy to art. In science, the creative component is in both how you ask the questions and also in how you solve the problems. And they're two kind of different activities, um, but they both involve creativity, that if you can ask a new question or if you can ask a question in a, a completely different way than it's been asked before or in a different context, you can often make a lot of progress quickly. We're starting to see what a test for immunological health will look like. We're getting the first bits of data on that. It still needs to be polished and refined and verified and so forth, and that'll probably take a few more years. And then to actually be available to people in clinics, probably a few years after that. So it's not an overnight type of thing, but it's a process. You have to start somewhere, and I think we made a really good start. Almost every time, if you're doing something that's really out there, there's going to be resistance to believing it. Sometimes very fierce resistance. But go back to the art analogy. If you're an artist, why would you paint the same pictures as everyone else? What, what, what is your value um, if, if you're doing what everyone else is doing? Or if, or if you're doing minor variations on what everyone else is doing? So I want to paint different pictures, new pictures. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.